today's first chapter Friday, We Dream of Space by Erin Atrada Kelly. You have to dream. We all have to dream. Charles McAuffel, Mission Specialist. Wednesday, January 1st, 1986. Ready for takeoff. The pinball machine didn't still fetch Thomas's quarter. Not really. But when one of the flippers is broken, there's no point in playing. As soon as Fitch realized this, something sparked inside him, something ugly and familiar. He started the slot where he had sunk his quarter only moments before. Easy does it, Fitch. Just go to Mr. Hanley's office and get your quarter back. No big deal. The blinking lights on the machine, Bright Star One, it was called, seemed out of place in the arcade today. Fitch looked around. He was one of the only people there. Maybe it was too early for people. It was never too early for him. Ready for takeoff, the lights blazed. He left them behind and walked to Mr. Hindley's office. The door with manager stenciled above the frame was open, as usual. Mr. Hindley was manager, owner, and staff. When quarters were stolen, he was the man to see. Fitch cleared his throat. Mr. Hindley, he said. Mr. Hindley looked up from his ledger. Henry Nielsen Thomas, my favorite patron. What brings you to the front office? This was what Mr. Henley always said, even though no one called him Henry, and Mr. Henley's office was in the back corner of the small arcade, nowhere near the front. Fitch motioned half-heartedly toward Pinball Row. One of the machines is broken. He said, Mr. Henley placed both of his hands on his desk and stood up like President Reagan, ready to face the Soviets. This is unacceptable, patron Thomas, he said. Mr. Henley was what Fitch's mother would call an odd duck, but he moved fast. Within seconds, he was in front of the major havoc game in the center of the arcade, squinting at the screen. Not that one, Fitch said. He pointed at Bright Star One. This one. Mr. Henley raised his eyebrows. But you're a major havoc guy. All from all, all from one, fighting for humanity, and all that? Yes, it was true. On any given day, Fitch could be found at the Park Delaware Arcade, officially named the Pinball Wizard, but known to the locals as Arcade on Main, playing Major Havoc, a game that that his best friend Vern Repass said was a Star Wars wannabe, even though Major Havoc had been released first. But whatever. Vern was so obsessed with Star Wars that Fitch had developed unfounded resentment toward Luke, Han Solo, and the whole lot of them. Except Vader, maybe. Vader was kind of cool. The more Vern raged on about major havoc and the more dedicated and defensive Fitch became, and now he was so preoccupied with beating his own high score that major havoc in all of his vector graphic glory sometimes appeared in his dreams, demanding that he get to the reactor before everyone exploded. But today was January 1st, and Fitch had made a New Year's resolution to try something different. The last time he was there, his twin sister had come along and had been entranced by Bright Star One with its spaceships and lights. But she didn't want to actually play it. Video games were not her thing. But she tried to convince him to give it a chance. He snapped at her to leave him alone, then felt bad about it later. So he'd gone to the pinball machine this morning, even though no one played pinball anymore. And now look what had happened. Mr. Henley made his way to Bright Star One and tapped it affectionately. What's wrong with it, he asked. The right flipper's broken, replied Fitch. Mr. Henley pushed the buttons. When nothing happened, he said, it's impossible to play a respectable game of pinball with just one flipper. Duh, Fitch thought. Mr. Henley disappeared into the office and emerged seconds later with a sheet of paper with out of order written across it in fat black letters. The smell of magic marker wafted in the air as he taped it across Bright Star One. Thanks for the heads up, patron Thomas, Mr. Henley said. He smiled. It was a wide and pleasant to look up at most of his face. Anything I can do to help you with? Yeah, you can give me my quarter, Fitch thought, but he didn't say it out loud. The fire was too bright.